Welcome guys to the Game Grid. I'm George and today I'm reviewing Horizon Forbidden West. After the critically acclaimed Horizon Zero Dawn, Guerrilla Games blessed us with a sequel almost 5 years later. My hopes are that they can make the NPCs feel more alive, the side quests matter more and of course give us answers to those hundreds of questions Horizon Zero Dawn left us with. Can I make my hopes come true? Let's check it out. Okay, first things first, if you haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn or you don't have a photographic memory, I would advise you to at least play the main story or watch a recap on YouTube. Because the game does a decent job of catching up, but it has a lot of small details and reference to its predecessor. For me, finishing Zero Dawn a month before the release of Forbidden West really added to the overall experience. But okay, let's move on to the story. We start our journey with Aloy, six months after the end of Horizon Zero Dawn, while she's still looking for a way to reboot Gaia, an AI that hopefully can restore the Earth after the aftermath after defeating Hades. You find out Silence didn't tell you the truth about what happened to Hades at the end of Zero Dawn. You set out to hunt him down in the Forbidden West and stop him from whatever he's doing. But this time you're not doing it alone. A few friends will join you in trying to stop Silence and of course you'll make a few friends along the way. Guerrilla Games almost took the Bioware approach to this. After a few hours of gameplay you will get a home base which you will return to after every main mission. Your companions will be waiting there for a good conversation. This works well most of the time, but because you don't get to make any real choices during your conversations it can feel a bit of an exposition dump. But luckily Guerrilla Games does an excellent job of making the conversation throughout the world really engaging, with some excellent voice acting and great detail to body language. You will not just be told someone is sad, angry or nervous, but you can see it in their face and the way they move. Even the small things like the hand gestures or the expression on the people's faces are excellently done. Even with minor characters in the game there is more than enough details in these areas to really give you the feeling the people are living here in this world. I thought they did a really great job with this, even small conversations, they don't just stand there having a staring contest with you, but they actually move around like a normal person would. This put together with an excellent voice acting, really pays off in this minor and bigger quest. The main story of Horizon for Me the West is really enjoyable and expands the world in some really interesting ways. There are some minor plot holes but nothing that took me out of the experience. The story I don't want to get too much into detail with, because you have to experience it for yourself. But the game story really shines for me is in the side quests. While Horizon Zero Dawn most side quests are were forgettable at best, Guerrilla Games really put a lot of effort in putting a story behind every side quest from collectibles to the bigger side quest, where you will actually impact the people and the lands of the Forbidden West. It's all backed by excellent story. The times I got sidetracked by a side mission because I simply wanted to know how the story was gonna play out? Countless. Overall, I'm really impressed by the story of Horizon from Middle West. For the first time in the franchise, I actually care about what's going to happen to Alloy and her companions and this world, and not just about this dark apocalyptic past. The basic gameplay from Zero Dawn remains intact in Forbidden West with some welcome improvements, and new weapons and gameplay elements like the ability to parachute down from high places, the rope cars which allows you to pull you up to specific points on the map, it makes climbing a lot faster and will get you out of a tight spot in combat. Like always, the enemies are one of the big stars in Horizon, specifically the machines you'll be fighting. Scanning an enemy to look at their weak parts and planning to take them down remains a drill. I really like how breaking off specific parts of machines will prevent the machine from using certain attacks. This put together with the elemental weakness a machine can have like ice, fire and more, make for some really satisfying combat. Taking down a horde of machines after a carefully laid out plan or seeing your plan fall apart and barely coming out on top with almost no supplies remains satisfying. Human enemies have gotten an upgrade as well, there are some new enemy types like some will be riding a machine or be carrying an energy shield. The human enemies will be camped out throughout the world of the Forbidden West. Here's where most of the stealth gameplay comes in, you can sneak around, try to take them out without them ever noticing you were there. But if you want to just run up them and put a spear in their face, you're in luck, because they greatly improve the hand to hand combat. It's still not super deep, but you have basic light and heavy attacks. And you can unlock some combos in the skill tree, which makes it a lot more useful and I found myself using the spear a lot more than I did in Zero Dawn. But of course, Forbidden West has a lot more weapons like the classic Tripcaster and the Blast Sling, and new weapons like the Spike Throw and the Shredder Gauntlet, which allows you to throw a disc that will return to you. Something I didn't know I wanted until I saw it. 
Overall, you get a steady stream of new weapons to keep experimenting with. This, put together with the elemental weaknesses of enemies, keeps combat interesting throughout the game. But to be able to use and upgrade all these lovely letters, you will have to gather resources in the world from sticks and shards to make arrows to machine parts like brace, sparkers to make explosive spears. To upgrade some of the gear, you will need some machine parts that you will have to shoot off before killing it or it will break. Other times you will need to leave the parts intact before killing it or it will break. If you want these upgrades, this will change the way you approach certain battles because you might want that tremor task before taking it down. There are a lot of side activities to do in the world of Horizon Forbidden West, like collectibles, racing, fighting pits, hunting grounds and specific ruins where you have to solve environmental puzzles to get the treasure you seek. None of them stand out as particularly great, but you will get some nice awards and none of them overstay their welcome. There's also a board game named Strike a la Gwent from The Witcher 3. I always think simplicity is king in these kind of side games and that's why I think Gwent succeeds in where Strike fails. It just takes too long to get into. Except for the few matches I had to play for the trophy, I didn't feel compelled to play any more of it. Overall I've gotten everything I wanted from Horizon for Middle West. The way they tell the story in both the side and main mission is absolutely amazing. It can be a little bit heavy on the dialogue and the exposition, but if you're like me you will love that kind of stuff. I do wish we've gotten a few more choices that actually impacted the story, but Eloy is very much her own character and this is her story. I really like I Eloy, sometimes I'm totally on board her and sometimes I'm thinking you're such a bitch. Luckily I like that in my characters. So maybe having more choices would have taken away from the character. The main story of Horizon for the West was fun and interesting. The characters you meet good and bad were a joy to interact with. I do wish we could have spent a little more time with the main villains because sometimes I forgot they were even there. The overall gameplay for Forbidden West is fun and addictive. There are lots of little ticks to do to keep you off the golden path and taking down a huge machine is always satisfying. Exploring the open world of Forbidden West always felt rewarding. Is it a piece of story, some gear or some skill points? I always felt satisfied while I was exploring the world of Forbidden West. The extra emphasis they put on elemental damage really changed up the gameplay. It made me experiment more with different weapons and that's always a good thing. After over 100 hours of playing Horizon Forbidden West and platinum it, I loved every minute of it. This is the step the franchise needed to make. Is, and if you're into open world games with lots of dialogue and lots of story, this is the game for you. Okay guys, that was the review for Horizon from Middle West. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more reviews, podcasts or mods, stay tuned.